Uh, then let's look at the spray-up process to manufacture polymetric composites. So this process is also quite similar to the previous process. In here, instead of just uh, the manually pouring or uh, the spreading the, the matrix materials on the reinforcements, uh, we can use a spray gun to just spray the, the uh, matrix materials uh, with the reinforcements. And then by doing so, we can just manufacture the, uh, the polymetric composite. So that is why we call it a spray-up technique. In this process, we use continuous towers of fiber. So usually we use glass fiber with this spray up process that is most commonly used type. And the matrix material or the resin materials could be thermosetting material, mostly the polyester, epoxies, and polyamides. Okay. And here also most commonly used is the polyester, uh, the resin uh, during the spray up process to manufacture polyometric composites. And this is also another type of simple process for forming composite structures actually. Let's try to go through the steps. And here the catalyst resin and the tow of fibers are both fed into a spray gun. So it's a special type of spray gun. So then it can inject uh, the matrix materials in the liquid form at the same time. So we can feed the fibers to the spray gun and then it will chop that fibers into small pieces and then uh, the, it will deposit or it will spray up uh, the reinforcements together with the liquid matrix materials on top of the mold surface. So that is the idea, right? So if you want to know what the catalyst is, the catalyst is a substance that creates a reaction when combined or mixed with another material or ingredient. So then uh, depending on the, the resin that we're going to use, we can select the suitable catalyst material uh, to create the reaction and then to be injected onto the mold surface together with the, the reinforcement material. Here the resin is sprayed out from the spray gun. And so there's a video to explain the process. You can see the operation of the spray gun in the next slide. So here you can see that the fiber is fed into the top of the gun. So then we can feed the fiber uh, through the gun, a special uh, location. And then that fiber is chopped into short lengths, which fold into the spray of the resin, right? So then uh, the fibers chopped into small pieces and then it will just fold into the mold surface. At the same time, uh, the, the uh, resin material uh, can wet the fibers and then stick onto the mold surface. So that is the idea here. In the, in the same way uh, to the, the manual layer process. So here also we can use some mold release agents uh, to release the mold afterwards. And also we can apply some uh, the coatings uh, to avoid uh, the visibility of the reinforcement material on the surface actually, right? So therefore uh, we can just apply some uh, mold release agent on top of the mold. Uh, in the, here also it could be a one-sided component actually. So we can manufacture the mold or we can fabricate the mold into the desired shape that we need. And then after that, we can apply some mold release agent uh, on top of the mold surface. And then we can uh, spray up uh, the, some coating layers to the desired thickness, maybe a few millimeters of thickness. Uh, by doing so, we can avoid the resin penetration to the surface of the component. And due to this coating layer, you might not see the reinforcements within the surface. So which should not be good for the appearance of the component. So then by having the coating layer, so we can just have a good surface finish uh, for this process as well. Right? So then we have the mold and then we apply the, the mold release agent and then also we have applied the coating. And then now it is the time to apply uh, the, the, uh, the, the resin material into the mold together with the reinforcements uh, using the spray gun. Okay. So here we'll have the short fibers, although we use a long fiber, uh, it is it has been chopped into a small pieces and then I spread over the, the mold surface. So therefore uh, it is, it's going to be a short fibers here. So those fibers will align randomly uh, as they fall into the uh, mold surface. In here, one of the main issues would be to control the thickness of the component. We can keep injecting the resin together with the, the reinforcements, but however, so depending on the thickness, uh, depending on the size of the component, we have to decide how long we have to spray. So it depends on the operate experience as well. So therefore, it would be difficult to control the thickness of the mold in actually, right? So then if you want to have a thickness of three millimeters, possibly it could be difficult to get more precise or exactly precise value of three millimeters. You might get some kind of deviation of the thickness uh, possibly the better to get some uh, extra thickness if you want to have some specific thickness or specific dimensions for a given applications. And also, again, here we're going to spray the resin, which could contain some volatile components. So that could create some health and safety issues because of the fumes created by these volatile uh, the, the resin materials. And uh, the, this could be a really a good technique for uh, the very large moldings, uh, the like uh, the bolt hulls. 
So especially the boat hulls are manufactured using a spray up technique. So this could be quick because we're going to use the spray gun. Depending on the thickness, uh, the, the, we can just uh, the apply the resin uh, and the reinforcements uh, on top of the, the molding material uh, for some certain time, depending on the, the, uh, the uh, thickness that we need. So after, after finishing the spray up, so we have to leave the, the molding uh, to be cured. Maybe uh, it, it could be a couple of days before you uh, the remove the uh, component from the molding. So you have to uh, the, uh, control the conditions during the curing time as well. So the, these factors like curing time, curing conditions uh, should be carefully controlled based on the material that you use and also based on the dimension of the structure that you're going to uh, manufacture. Here there's a nice video to explain the procedure of manufacturing uh, polymetric composite structures using the sprayer process actually. Lay up and spray up. Manual layup and spray up are widely used methods of manufacturing a wide range of composite parts and components. The primary fiber reinforcement materials for manual layup and spray up include glass, carbon or graphite, and aramid. The matrix materials used are typically thermosetting polymers, usually the polyesters, epoxies, and polyimids. Manual layup typically begins with cutting the reinforcement materials to size. This may be performed using utility knives, reciprocating knives, scissors, disc cutters, power shears, rotary power cutters, saws, gantry ply cutters, lasers, water jet cutting, or ultrasonic vibratory cutting. The reinforcement may also be in the form of a fiber preform. These preforms are produced in several different manners, with the primary method being pre-shaping by spraying chopped reinforcement and binder onto a shaped screen form. Composite layups and sprayups are produced using molds having the desired finished part shape. Molds for composite manufacturing are most commonly made of wood, plaster, metal, or composites. The decision of what type of mold material to use depends largely on the volume of parts to be made with the mold and processing requirements, such as temperature and pressure. Wet layup is the most common manual method of making fiber reinforced plastic matrix composites, with thermosetting resins far more widely used than thermoplastic resins. Before layup, a mold release or parting agent is applied to the mold to ease removal of the composite part afterwards. Common release agents include silicone, polyvinyl alcohol, fluorocarbons, and water-based solvents. A layer of catalyzed resin is often applied to the release coated mold and allowed to cure to the gel or tacky state before the reinforcement is applied. This so-called gel coat is a protective surface layer through which reinforcement fibers do not penetrate. Special gel coat resins can improve flexibility, blister and stain resistance, toughness, and weatherability. As the gel coat cures, the reinforcement material, typically in the form of cloth or mat, is prepared for application by impregnation with liquid resin. This is referred to as pre-wetting. The pre-wetted reinforcement material is then carefully placed on the coated mold surface to minimize distortion during transfer. More reinforcement material and resin are applied as needed in this manner until required part thickness has been built up. Typically, the pre-wetted material is hand rolled to achieve uniform distribution and to remove entrapped air. Because of the difficulty of handling wet reinforcement materials, the technique of placing dry reinforcement in the mold and then subsequently saturating it with liquid resin is also commonly used for layup. Additionally, 
manual layup can also be performed using prepreg or pre-impregnated material. Prepreg combines partially cured resin with typically continuous or short unidirectional fibers in thin sheet or tape form. Prepreg is tacky and will maintain its position during layup. In fabric form, it also has sufficient flexibility or drape to conform to fairly complex shapes. Prepreg material, which may be directional, is often laid in alternating cross-layer fashion to improve overall composite properties. Prepreg reduces resin consumption and can improve part quality by providing more consistent control of reinforcement and resin contents. However, prepreg must be kept in refrigerated storage until use to prevent pre-curing. Once reinforcement is placed in the mold, inserts made of metals, woods, plastics, or other materials can also be easily placed in position. These inserts serve as stiffeners, fastener receptacles, or other purposes. To produce hollow parts, cores may be used for manual layup. Cores are commonly designed to dissolve or collapse for removal from the part after curing. The manual spray up of composites uses continuous roving that is chopped, mixed with resin and cure initiator, and blown onto the mold. As with manual layup, the mold is coated with mold release and may have a gel coat applied. Once sufficient amount of material is blown onto the mold, the mixture is hand rolled for consolidation to remove trapped air and to ensure fiber wet out. Spray guns meter the resin and initiator with the chopping and blowing of the fibers. Special grades of glass fiber called gun rovings cut cleanly, wet rapidly, and conform to intricate contours. Special spraying resins minimize drain off and other speed gel time. Spray ups are also commonly reinforced with mat or fabric to build thickness and improve strength. Manufacturing cost for spray up is less than for layup, but resulting mechanical properties are typically reduced. Spray up is useful mainly for producing large parts and those of complex geometry. To further compress and consolidate the material in a mold after layup or spray up, techniques such as vacuum bag molding or autoclave molding can be utilized. In vacuum bag molding, a non adhering plastic film, typically polyester, is sealed around the mold and layup material. An air valve or valves are then added to the plastic film for vacuum connections. Once ready, the bag is drawn by vacuum against the layup, removing entrapped air and compressing the layup material against the mold for good wet out, part definition, and the elimination of voids. Additionally, the vacuum also draws out excess resin. Once full vacuum is applied, the composite material in the mold is allowed to cure at room temperature or transferred to an oven for curing. Vacuum is usually maintained during the entire heating and cooling cycle. Vacuum bag molding is effective in producing relatively large and complex shaped parts including those having compound contours. In autoclave molding, the layup is bagged and sealed, and then evacuated of air and other volatiles under vacuum. The layup is then placed in an autoclave and exposed to heat and high pressure. This makes the most fully dense and strongest composite possible. Besides debulking and consolidation of the material, autoclave molding can be used to adhesive bond assembly parts and provide curing as well.
curing pressures can range from 50 to 100 pounds per square inch or 345 to 690 kilopascals. Let's review the material contained in this program. Manual layup and spray up are widely used methods of manufacturing a wide range of composite parts and components. The primary fiber reinforcement materials for manual layup and spray up include glass, carbon or graphite, and aramid. The matrix materials used are typically thermosetting polymers, usually the polyesters, epoxies, and polyimides. Manual layup typically begins with cutting the reinforcement materials to size. The reinforcement may also be in the form of a fiber preform. Composite layups and spray ups are produced using molds having the desired finished part shape. Molds for composite manufacturing are most commonly made of wood, plaster, metal, or composites. The decision of what type of mold material to use depends largely on the volume of parts to be made with the mold and processing requirements such as temperature and pressure. Wet layup is the most common manual method of making fiber reinforced plastic matrix composites. Before layup, a mold release or parting agent is applied to the mold to ease removal of the composite afterwards. A layer of catalyzed resin known as gel coat is often applied to the release coated mold and allowed to cure to the gel or tacky state before the reinforcement is applied. As the gel coat cures, the reinforcement material, typically in the form of cloth or mat, is prepared for application by impregnation with liquid resin. This is referred to as pre-wetting. The pre-wetted reinforcement material is then carefully placed on the coated mold surface to minimize distortion from transfer. Typically, the pre-wetted material is hand rolled for uniform distribution and removal of entrapped air. Because of the difficulty of handling wet reinforcement materials, the technique of placing dry reinforcement in the mold and then subsequently saturating it with liquid resin is also commonly used for layup. Additionally, manual layup can also be performed using prepreg or pre-impregnated material. Prepreg combines partially cured resin with typically continuous or short unidirectional fibers in thin sheet or tape form. Prepreg is tacky and will maintain its position during layup. In fabric form, it also has sufficient flexibility or drape to conform to fairly complex shapes. The manual spray up of composites uses continuous roving that is chopped, mixed with resin and cure initiator, and blown onto the mold. As with manual layup, the mold is coated with mold release and may have a gel coat applied. Once sufficient amount of material is blown onto the mold, the mixture is hand rolled for consolidation, to remove trapped air, and to ensure fiber wet out. To further compress and consolidate the material in a mold after layup or spray up, techniques such as vacuum bag molding or autoclave molding can be utilized. I think it was a really detailed video to explain both uh, the manual layup and spray up processes, including the materials and the conditions uh, that are being used in during those processes actually. All right, if you look at some of the uh, the advantages and disadvantages of the spray up process. So if you try to look at some of the possible advantages, so this process could be uh, relatively faster. Of course, we just use the spray gun to spray up the, the reinforcement uh, and the matrix materials. Uh, onto the mold surface compared to the manual layer process. So therefore, it could be passed, but you have to again understand that 
uh, the here we manufacture very large components so therefore it takes some time maybe more than a day to manufacture a given part right uh, again the initial capital for this process uh, could be relatively low but it could be higher than the uh, manual layer process here we have to just purchase this special type of spray gun and then uh, the uh, still it could be like a relatively uh, cheap process to be carried out for manufacturing of uh, pmcs right and also this process could also have low cost tooling cause we use some uh, simple devices like uh, the rollers and uh, the other devices which could be simple to purchase uh, however the spray gun is a kind of a expensive device that you have to purchase uh, compared to the uh, the manual layer process and also uh, the materials could be cheaper we use some polyesters but if you use some materials like carbon fiber or amid or kevlar so then it could be expensive uh, but however in general we can use some cheap materials uh, for this process and also this technique is uh, the widely used and well established uh, to manufacture some large components like boat hulls and also this could be used to manufacture some other large structures used in different applications if if you look at some of the disadvantages of this process so this process could be limited by the the type of the resin and fibers that we can use uh, as i mentioned you and also uh, as as was explained in the video so most commonly used uh, the fiber type is the glass fibers because we can chop that into uh, small pieces uh, quite easily and also uh, the resin can wet these fibers uh, into a good level so therefore glass fibers are the most commonly used type in this process and the polyester resin is the most commonly used type of matrix material but however we can use the some other materials like uh, the carbon fibers or aramid or maybe kevlar so but there could be limitations uh, of using these type of resins and fibers due to the nature of the process so the ideally so we should be able to chop those uh, the the uh, the uh, fibers into pieces and also they should be compatible with the spray in up with a spray gun so those are the kind of limitation in this process and also of course there could be some health and safety issues uh, as we could use uh, some volatile resins so they could just be uh, uh, evaporated uh, into the environment so they are therefore the people uh, using this process or dealing with this process should do uh, the suitable protective devices to avoid inhalation of the the fumes and also to avoid contact with the resins or the other type of material that could be uh, harmful for the skin and so on in this process it's a bit difficult to control the thickness so due to that so we might just spray up lots of resin onto the the uh, structure or onto the mold surface so therefore uh, we might produce some resin rich laminates because it is a bit difficult to decide how many layers that we need to get the the required thickness so therefore it might be given some kind of structures which might be heavier than the required for applications so this might be mainly due to the difficulty of controlling the thickness of this process actually and also we use short fibers but quite difficult to control the orientation of these short fibers uh, within the structure of the composite material so then they will have a random orientation so therefore it might be an issue however so we can just uh, the improve the orientation and wetting of the fibers by using some kind of rollers uh, after completing the spray up so then we can just uh, the roll over the surface uh, to to uh, to improve the wetting of the fibers and also to improve the uh, the proper contact or proper alignment of fibers but Uh, we cannot control the alignment of the fibers it could be completely random so that could be a limitation or the disadvantage of this process actually and also uh, we have to just use some low viscous resins otherwise we cannot inject those uh, the resin on top of the uh, mold surface therefore due to the nature of the process we have to use some low viscous resin so therefore we might not use some particular material uh, in this process and in this case sometimes it might affect to the the mechanical properties of the structure cause uh, we use some particular resins that can be low viscous uh, and then this could also be some kind of limitation for this process actually so however so this process is quite uh, well developed and then could be used for some sort of large components uh, uh, to be manufactured they these could be uh, relatively complex component as well the mainly so it might not need some advanced technologies so therefore this could be like widely used uh, then and relatively simple and cheap manufacturing process for polymeric composite for some specific applications